Hello guys, uh, Jean Pereira here. Today I'm going to show you how I did uh, this effect, this kind of voxelized um, effect, as you can see, it, little spheres intersecting with the geometry, and was inspired by this one, as you can see. But this one used squares, I used uh, spheres. And let's get started. Uh, I will delete this. Uh, I just got a simple uh, Alembic file here, as you can see, and uh, I converted polygon. So the geometry I have here it's hollow, so we don't have anything inside, so we can't intersect it with anything because it's only the surface so the thing we need to do is convert this uh, VDB we need to make this a volume so we'll use a VDB from polygons and change the voxel size something really low yeah this is good and now we need to convert this back again to polygons so oops I will use a convert VDB. Yeah. And convert to polygon 2. You can increase the voxel size to make this more um, more detailed, but 0 0.02 it's good for me for the purpose of this tutorial. So now we need to intersect this volume with points and then we'll use those points to copy over the um, the geometry we want like spheres uh, a box what you want so we'll create a box and we'll we will make this box the size of our uh, mesh but the mesh is, mov is moving, so we need to do some expressions here. So I will change the size and create this expression to seal. And we we'll use the bonding box expression. And I will just create a null here and call this out mesh. All right. I will use the beamboxing expression and reference the outmesh and I will use the um, the x size for the size in x and I will time this forward so you can later change this all right I will copy this put this here uh, put this here and I will change this to Y and this to Z. All right. Now, uh, I think everything is working. Uh, yeah. So now we need a center. So to do that, I will use the centroid expression and. I will reference the hot um, mesh and oh yeah I forgot to close this so here and yeah all right um, yeah I will reference the hot mesh and I will use the X size X just X this time. I will close this. I will copy this, paste the Y and the Z. Right, this should be working. Uh, I reference this and X. Right. Make box says X.
All right, I think this should do it. Yeah, I forgot the uh, end parentheses. So as you can see now, the um, the box is moving with the geometry. And you can change this by middle mouse click and come here and change this if it's too low. So we have the box. Next thing we need to intersect the box with the geometry. To do that, I will use a group and source data this one and no a bonding object this one and this one. Uh, no, 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 sorry. This one comes here, and this one comes here. Right. So I have this, and I don't want to bound this by a number. I want this to bound by our bounding box, and I will use the bounding object points only. And then I will use the blast node. But first, let me call this points, point folding. Alright, uh, group type is points and delete non selected. Make sure the entity is on points as well. And. Alright, oh, um, you need to make some divisions here. So, as you can see, the box, the box had no divisions, so we couldn't intersect with anything. So, make sure divisions is on. And I will use the size in X, so I will copy this parameter and I will paste copied relative reference. And I will do this times 100, maybe, yeah. And now I will copy this one and I will paste here. Alright, paste. Alright, as you can see, it's very dense. And when we group this, it's gonna take a while to cook let's see ah uh, one last thing make sure the box the primitive type is points uh, yep yeah, everything should be yeah as you can see now the box has a lot of points and we will intersect this with our geometry one other points maybe it's maybe too much so I will change this uh, not times uh, all right always change this by hand uh, mine uh, 20 maybe as you can see uh, it's too low I will keep this at one end all right let it cook it's gonna take a while All right, it's grouped now, and we can blast it away. As you can see now, we have points intersecting with our geometry. But maybe I will come here to the divisions, and I will delete this channel, and delete this channel, and I will copy this. Uh, no, I will copy this parameter, and I will paste here. I will copy this parameter and paste it here. All right. And I will make sure I time it by 100. All right. Now it's going to take longer to cook, but will give us a better result. Let's see. Mine took I I used a lot of divisions, so it took me around one minute to to cook everything. Let's see on this one. All right, as you can see now, much cleaner result. Now we have the points, as you can see, uh, as you can see, 
And don't scrub the, the timeline since this is going to be a heavy operation, so we'll take around 20 seconds to calculate. Depends on how much divisions you have here. You can change this. And I blast the points. You can name the group whatever you want. Make sure that it's the same. You can even copy this parameter and on the blast node, paste. All right. So if you change anything here, it will change here automatically. So now we have the points. We need to paste the um, copy over a primitive uh, template to copy. It's this one. And this time I will use a box, I think. And I will make this really low. Mm. Yeah, 0 0.1, it's too low. Yeah, it seems good. And I will copy this to here. As you can see, it's a uh, really high poly count. Uh, it, it's really high. I will just cusp the normal. So we can see it better. As you can see, um, it's they don't match so to fix this I will just um, come to the uniform scale and I will use the divisions no, not the divisions yeah Maybe, no. I will I will just insert uh, a number now we'll try to make it fit. Uh, no. Nope. Zero point zero one seems to be working. Yeah, this is good. As you can see, uh, it made a point here. Uh, when we you increase the division size, it it will fix that. All right, this seems good. No intersecting geometry. You can even decrease this to have a little space. Not so low. And this gives it a little space. As you can see, a little gap. Uh, we'll keep this. Yeah. This seems good. I will use this one. As you can see, I added the vertex to cusp the normals. You can even use a point or a facet to do that. And next thing I did was add a, a noise and color to this. I will use an attribute swap for that. Uh, okay. We'll use an attribute swap. And I will call this color. And the null. I will call this range. Alright. Um, go inside the color and we will take the position and connect it to a turbulent noise make sure it's a 3D noise and I use a fit range and clamp for this one we'll connect this here and promote everything and I will use a ramp And I will promote uh, turbulent noise as well. And the type as well. Uh, by the way, mi middle mouse click to promote. And create. All right. To to change everything, go back. And one level, and here you can see you can change everything. So to the noise type, 
I will use Burst Convulsion Noise. I think that's the one I use. Foreign Turbulence. Frequency, I did something like 4. Point, uh, maybe change the the minimum value here. Like, I think I used a negative value. I'm not sure. Yeah, this one. Increase the frequency. And of course, I change the color. So. You, we can use like uh, bluish, bluish down here, yeah, and this one, like a really, yeah, this is good, I think, not so saturated. And you can even change this to yellow or something. Uh, mess with these parameters. The um, as you can see, I think I will use the um, maximum value zero, and I will change the minimum. Yeah, two point four maybe. Yeah, this is good. Can increase the uh, decrease the frequency of the the noise. I'll increase it. As you can see, the oh, this is gonna take a while to calculate. But the noise won't um, won't stick to the surface. You can use a an attribute hop and start the position like I did in the last tutorial. I can project UVs on this one. And use the rest position, or I think you can do it with attribute interpolate. Not sure. I'm kind of new to it, so um, on the one I did, I didn't. I left the texture floating with the character, so just mess with the with the parameters here and create a, your own effect. This one looks good to me. I will increase this. And it's just a tiny gap. Alright. To render this one, I just used an environment light and created a camera. I also created the grid. As you can see. To the material, I think I used a mantra surface and the white paint for the floor. The white paint I used a really dark one. And for the environment map, uh, you can use um, Udini. I th yeah, you can use an Udini sky. As you can see, this one should work. Uh, let's look to the camera, lock it, and you can move it around. I will disable the light in the viewport. All right, I will do this. That yeah, seems good. I will create a mantra PBR, and on the mantra surface, make sure use point color is on. Sorry about that. And yeah, if you. If you render this out now, you should get the final result. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next tutorial.